EC3 has had quite possibly the craziest roller coaster of a wrestling career. Wrestling for over a decade across multiple companies, from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs to the most unhinged of unhinged. EC3 has had quite the career both inside and outside the ring. What's up guys, it's Tom with Topton Wrestling and today we're going to be discussing the curious case and downward spiral of EC3 and talk about just about everything that has gone wrong in the world of EC3. Before we begin though, I'm making a big announcement very soon and I ask that you go subscribe to this channel on screen and links down below. I'm going to give a quick clue to what it is. There we go, that, that's the clue. That's definitely a dead giveaway. But yeah, subscribe to Wrestle Club and let's get into this video. EC3 began his wrestling career in 2002 and would mainly just wrestle around his home state of Ohio using his real name of Michael Hutter. Throughout the 2000s, EC3 would make a few appearances for WWE, including on heat tapings and jobber appearances for WWE, as well as appearing for OVW, WWE's developmental territory at the time, a few times between 2002 and 2008. And they must have wanted to keep him around because when OVW changed to FCW in 2009, Michael Hutter was snapped up to be a part of FCW. He took on the name Derek Bateman and he would have a fairly successful time in Florida Championship Wrestling, being a one-time Florida Tag Team Champion with Johnny Curtis. In 2010, it was announced that he would be part of the fourth season of NXT, which was back when NXT was kind of like that, that weird game show that if you won it, you'd become a superstar for WWE, you would get a contract. His pro was Daniel Bryan, and the two of them got fairly over together with the NXT crowd. They had that funny moment where they cheated on one of the games and got major heat for it backstage, apparently. Derek Bateman would finish third in NXT, meaning unfortunately, he's not going to become a WWE superstar. But he would be given a second chance when he would return for NXT Redemption, the fifth season of NXT, which was a season dedicated to past contestants of NXT getting a second chance. He would make it to the final three of this casting again but this time round he wouldn't win once again but only because there was no winner NXT ended up transitioning into like a weird weekly show and then it would eventually become what we know as NXT today however I guess WWE had no plans to include Derek Bateman in this as he would make a few more jobber appearances for the WWE and got released in 2013 but this wasn't the end of Derek Bateman's career, as he would sign for TNA Impact Wrestling in 2013 as Ethan Carter III, taking on that new name and playing the nephew of Dixie Carter. Now, this was around the period where TNA just signed any ex-WWE guy, and this was kind of seen as nothing else. But surprisingly, EC3 was pushed heavily and would loiter around the main event scene, tying it up and feuding against the likes of Kurt Angle, Bobby Lashley, Sting, Jeff Hardy, and more. And he was more than holding his own, and apparently TNA management recognised how well he was doing, and for whatever reason, he was a guy they really wanted to push, and they pushed him heavily, and he did well. And he would hit the pinnacle, defeating Kurt Angle on the June 28th, 2015 Impact for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Isn't that crazy? In the space of two years, he's gone from jobbing on WWE C-Show to beating Kurt Angle for a world title. An incredible two years. EC3 would stick around as a main eventer for TNA for a few years after this, as TNA's popularity would obviously fall and many of its stars would leave the company. He won the TNA world title once more and also had a TNA Grand Championship reign before he departed TNA in 2018. And it was time for his WWE return. He returned to WWE in 2018 with the EC3 name, not Derek Bateman, as EC3 for NXT and this was seen as a really good move for him. This was time for him to get that main event push in WWE like we knew he was capable from his time in TNA. His NXT run though, while solid and while he was treated as a top guy of the brand, it did end up being fairly uneventful. He was part of the five star ladder match for the NXT North American title at TakeOver New Orleans, that amazing match. However, he didn't win it and surprisingly, he was a bit of a loser in NXT. He lost feuds to Velveteen Dream and undisputed error and while it was still a better push than what he got last time in the WWE 
It seemed like they didn't really know what to do with him, and maybe he was more suited to the main roster, and he would get called up to the main roster. It was fairly out of nowhere. He was called up in December 2018, along with Lacey Evans, Heavy Machinery, Lars Sullivan, and Nikki Cross, after the McMahons did that really weird thing where they said the fans were the authority. Remember that whole thing? Yeah, he got called up from that. He immediately got into a TV feud with John Moxley, which ended up being the worst thing for him, and he ended up getting buried as a result of it. This was around the time that John Moxley was found out to be departing from the WWE, so WWE were trying to get him to be a heel on his way out, but fans were cheering for him against EC3, and as a result, EC3 got punished for it, and, well, that punishment stuck around. His WWE career was never the same. He was absolutely buried because of this. He got relegated to main event as a jobber within months. He was eliminated early at the Andre the Giant Battle Royal at 2019's Mania. And he was the first person eliminated. Yes, the first person eliminated in a 51-man Battle Royal at Super Showdown 2019. A low point in EC3's WWE career. He would remain a jobber for the rest of his time in WWE until his release in 2020 as part of COVID budget cuts, with four 24-7 title reigns to show for his time in WWE. But after this release, there was a lot of hype around EC3 for what he's going to do next. People were speculating about him going to AEW, facing MJF, doing all this kind of stuff. People were speculating about him returning to Impact and being a top guy and winning the world title in Impact again. But we kind of got something different. He did return to Impact in a really awesome moment, but it ended up being a really brief return to Impact, and it was a really weird gimmick that he was playing. He was really cryptic, did cinematic promos and matches where he was talking about freeing the narrative. It was strange, and nobody really understood it. And after leaving Impact, he went to Ring of Honor, making his debut there, and he continued this freedom narrative thing he was doing. He formed a stable for it, but this whole narrative thing really failed to hit, and his post-WE career just went stale again. He would begin experimenting though and making his own wrestling shows, making two shows titled Free the Narrative, two completely cinematic shows that weren't ticketed and were very, very bad. I've watched them both on the channel, feel free to check them out. The first show was main evented by him and Matt Cardona, the second show was main evented by him and Braun Strowman, which was a really big name to get on these free the narrative shows, and a big move would be made when him and Strowman would start Control Your Narrative, their own wrestling promotion. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right from the start, Control Your Narrative was seen as an absolute joke. No one really thought it was going to go far, no one really thought it was going to get many viewers, and no one really thought anything of it. But the fact is that EC3 did put some Control Your Narrative shows together. Don't get me wrong, they were awful, but he got some decently sized names for them. He got himself, Strowman, Austin Aries, Weston Blake, The OGK, Killer Cross, and whatever opinions you might have on these guys, they are popular names, and they're good names to get for these shows, and could probably help keep the promotion alive. But then the dominoes started falling. First, Killer Cross left. Afterwards, a tour was announced for Control Your Narrative. It seems like Killer Cross leaving wasn't going to affect them too much. But then Braun Strowman left and EC3 joined the NWA. They were all pretty much gone from Control Your Narrative, and soon after, the Control Your Narrative tour was cancelled, and as it stands right now, no shows for the future have been announced for Control Your Narrative. So, Control Your Narrative, I'm going to say it now, is probably dead. And with that, so is EC3's career. This is pretty much the end of EC3's career, there's no way any major promotion signs him up, and I can't really see him escaping the current mindset that fans have of him, of him being just a bit of a weirdo, and probably what plays a part of him being a weirdo is the stuff he gets on with outside of the ring. Often having outbursts towards fans and towards any criticism towards him on Twitter, and even screaming at fans during shows. 
He also of course had that really strange feud with the Velveteen Dream, like a real life feud where he accused Velveteen Dream of filming people in bathrooms and then Velveteen Dream responded. Just the two biggest degenerates are up against each other in a war. And it's things like that and his behaviour that probably won't want any major promotion to sign him as well. That is probably very much limiting him. And even so, I'm not here saying he wants to sign for a major promotion. I'm not saying that at all. He might be very happy with where he is, but this is the end of his career. And to be honest, it's kind of sad that this is going to be a big part of his legacy because he was really, really awesome in TNA. So, so good. And a lot of what's happened can't really be blamed on him, to be fair to him, but also a lot of it can. But hey, that's going to be it from me. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to smack that like button. Subscribe to Wrestle Club once again. Lots of exciting things are going on with Wrestle Club, so get subscribing. Either way, though, I'll see you all soon. Like the video, leave a comment what you want to see next. Subscribe to the Top 10 Wrestling channel with notifications on so you never miss a video. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye, and keep on rolling.